Good evening, everyone, and thank you very much for being here this evening with us. I am Eleni Mirciotti, and I'm coordinating the online training activities of Scientix. Uh, today, I have with me Luke Saunders, Senior Business Development Manager and Team Leader of uh, Britannica Launchpacks, who is going to introduce us to the Britannica and explain how we can use all those materials uh, in classroom. So without further ado, Luke, the floor is yours. Brilliant, thank you very much Eleni for the introduction and thank you everyone for joining me today. Um, as Eleni said, I represent Britannica and in particular today and throughout the campaign, I will be supporting you on the Britannica Launchpack Science Platform. Uh, so I'm just gonna share my screen and just hope Eleni can confirm that it's uh, viewable from your side. Um, hopefully that's come through okay. Um, so yes, hopefully you can see my screen. And is that okay on your end? Brilliant. So yes, yes first of all, uh, thanks for joining the session. And like I said, today will be a chance for me to answer any questions that you may have regarding the platform. But I thought what I would do to start with is just give you an insight into the platform itself and how it can support you as science teachers uh, across Europe. So Britannica Launchpacks is a platform that has over 1,600 pre-made lesson plans available for you to use. And what's great about this is that they're already there, full of content, ready to be used or customised for your personal teaching styles. So we understand that we have viewers here from different grade levels. And the great thing about this platform is that you can filter by grade to start with. So firstly, let's say you're working with some older students that need some support at the moment uh, for online learning, which of course is huge. Uh, it's been going on for a while and I'm sure it will continue sadly. Um, let's say we're grade nine to 12. We can straight away filter out the content for this specific grade range. And we can also go one step further here. We don't just cater for one sort of science, whether that be biology, chemistry or physics, we cater for all of these subjects. So let me maybe click on filter by category and show you here how again you can further filter your results. So let's say that today we want to focus on uh, animal habitats, life science. When you do a search here, it will now give you all of the lesson plans for this specific filtration. So again, you'll now see that each pack has different resources on offer. So the first one, there are more articles compared to others where there may be more video or image content. And the reason we've done this again is because we understand that you are looking to support your students who are of different abilities and prefer to learn through different styles. The great thing about these packs is that every single pack will look very similar. So let's say that today, for this example, we're looking at the, the savannas. When you go into one of the launch packs, you're gonna have a fantastic way in which you can access different resources. So again, here it's engaging for the student, which is very, very important. Again, linking back to the current times, how to keep students not only learning at home, but keeping them engaged. And every single one of these resources can also be removed from the pack. So you, as an educator, have a chance to go through this pack and before sharing it, remove any of the information that may not be relevant. This can be done in the customize tool at the top. So if I click on customize, again, this is because I have created my own personal login within Britannica Launchbacks, which you can all do if you decide to have a trial access during the STEM campaign. You will be able to remove and add your own content. So let's say, OK, my students are grade nine to 12. I'm going to look for something a bit more advanced than a video on a giraffe. I can remove that. The nice thing about this is that you can also upload your own documents. And again, why have we done this? Quite simply to allow you as teachers to inflict your own specific teaching methods on the pack. You will also see here that we give you the option to add a Kahoot quiz. Now, I know for many, many schools, not only for the teachers, but for students as well, Kahoot is very big and it can be quite a nice and fun, engaging way of encouraging students to answer questions on a related topic. When you create a customised pack, one thing to note is that you will have to change the name. 
this is so that if you ever did want to go back to the original pack, it will still be there. So let me just change this to customized. And again, show you how once again, you can go further and now set activities for the student. So before I do set an activity, I just want to again scroll down to show you the range of resources and most importantly, focus on the article content. So let's say I am looking at this article here. Every article across every single one of our 1600 plus lesson plans in launch packs comes equipped with these features. The first one is the option to change the reading level. So again, I talked about at the start this being for grade 9 to 12, but I know full well that your students of the same age are not all the same ability. There's absolutely no problem at all with that, and we've encouraged that student to differentiate the content to cater for their individual need. So if I click grade 6 to 8, it will quite simply just reduce that article's reading level to a lower standard. Again, let's say now, the student is reading through this article that you have given them access to and they see a word that they're not familiar with or not quite sure what the definition would be. With online learning, a teacher cannot always be there for every single student. We know you're not superhumans. <laughs> so what we've done is we've given you a one click dictionary where quite simply, if you ever see any word that may not be familiar to a student, you just double click on that and get a definition from Merriam-Webster. So again, differentiation is something that we're really big on in this platform to support your students and you as teachers uh, when trying to help them during the next three months. If I go back now to the pack, I just want to focus now on the assessment side. I know with science, it's all about assessment and hoping that students have understood certain theory, content and ideas. So not only do we ask you in launch packs to ask questions to your students, we've actually done it for you. We've saved you the time. So let's say I want to set an activity now on this pack that I've customized. I can now select from a range of learning strategies that have been adopted based on global teaching communities. So for example, maybe I want to add a full set or scroll down further and add specific questions that I want to find out from the students in terms of their understanding and how well received the information is. Again, when you're in your launch pack during your trial access, you will be pleased to see that you have access to this customized zone where now you can add those questions as you go through the pack. So again, I mentioned a moment ago, it's about understanding perspectives. We've acknowledged this and given you a chance to add some pre-existing questions related to this subset of questioning. Again, not only can you select from your grades six to 12, you can actually filter between lower grades to again, personalize the questions and assessment of the students. So let's say for example, I want to add question three, question six, and question seven. Now that's great. I've got three questions there that I would ask myself as a teacher, but we also again acknowledge that you have your own questions that you want to embed. And this can be done quite simply by selecting add a custom question. So maybe you want them to give a case study of a habitat or whatever it may be. Again, I know at this point, I'm just talking specifically about this specific pack on habitats, but bear in mind that we cover the different science topics as well. And I will show you in a moment again, some other pack examples. If you're happy with the questions you've made, all you would have to do in your teacher preview is click save and review, and you are now ready to assign that set of questions for this topic to a class. Very simply, you can assign it or you can schedule it into your calendar. So again, launch packs doesn't just have to be there for assessment. It can save you as science educators time because you can quite simply drag one of these pre-made lesson packs into your calendar and have it there ready to share. So it can be beneficial in many different ways. But if, for example, I did want to now assign this because, again, I'm working remotely and my students are on Zoom and I need to help them. 
if you click assign, you have the option to select a class. So you're going to see in a minute, I've already made so many different classes on here. So ignore this. I'm sure you won't. Well, you probably will have more. Um, but in this instance, I'm just going to select the AC schools class. So in a moment, I'll show you how to set up different classes. But once they're set up, this is how you assign the pack. Again, time frame is very important, especially at the moment where we're all trying our best as educators to support students whilst they're at home in time for exams. So we can now set them a due date for this work. We want to make sure that this turnaround is very quick so that we can move on to the next topic. So maybe I want to be quite harsh and say it's Tuesday today by Friday. I need this done. It can be done. And once you've selected your class and your due date, you can quite simply click assign and the notification will be sent out to all of those students within that class. The student will then receive that information as if to say you have four questions and you have completed zero at this stage. Note that on the left hand side, I didn't add any instructions at this point, but if you as educators wanted to support them with a more personalized learning approach, you can add preset instructions to help them answer those questions. So as you've probably seen, there's a lot to take in with Britannica launch packs, but as many science teachers find, this could be a perfect platform for them at this time where everything is online. And again, everything can be done in Britannica launch packs. So just before I open to any questions, I will just show you again, if you have a personal login, which I can set up for you, um, Eleni will be able to share with you a link and I would also that gives you access to register for the free month access through the STEM campaign. But the great thing here is that when you've got your own personal login within the account you have set up, you can start looking at the activities you've set, the different classes, the schedule that you, you have created within launch packs, and also a quick link to all of the customized packs that you've made. So as you start to constantly use Britannica launch packs, you can actually eliminate the pre-existing packs and just focus on the ones you've revised. So as you see here, the most recent one of Savannah's is here. And within this area at the top right hand corner for your personal login, you will also be able to set up your individual classes. So when I click on classes here, you will see again, I've got my long list of classes, but right at the bottom, I can now create a brand new class. So let's look at this now. You're new to launch packs. This is the first time you're creating a class. Click on add new class, give it a name, and even if you want, give it a description because you may actually find that you're creating a class for the more advanced students to support their challenges and needs but also creating the same pack for a lower ability to support those that are maybe struggling. The great thing about this is that no one needs to know which student is in which class. It just gives you as an educator a chance to really personalize these packs of information for different topics to support individual learning needs of the student. And then, yeah, that is a very quick overview to start this session today on Britannica launch packs. I know some of you that are watching already have reached out to me and have access, which is fantastic. I've had some great feedback already from colleagues that have been setting these up. But for those of you that haven't, please do feel free to reach out as well um, and answer any questions at this point, uh, because I'm more than happy to, to assist you during the next three months. Uh, so yeah, unless there's any questions. Look, thank you so much for the presentation. We have a few questions indeed. Yep. Um, one participant is asking, the standards are for the American curriculum. Is there a possibility to categorize using the British curriculum? Yes, absolutely. We actually do have a US curriculum version and a UK curriculum version, um, and that also includes strands of the IB, which I know is very popular across Europe. So yes, if you were to receive uh, a login, I can set you up with the preferred choice. Perfect, thank you so much. Uh, another question, can we see the activity or questions uh, using the trial version with no personal account? So in terms of how it would look without a personal account, if I log out of my personal account, you will be able to use launch packs and schedule 
existing packs. Let's say I'll use this one on pollution as an example. The only thing you won't be able to do is create the activities. So if you want to assess students, you would need to create a personal login within the account. However, you can still use the actual launch packs and customize them for just broader use. Maybe you're quite happy with this pack. You can easily then just go on more, download it offline and share it to be ready used. But if you want the assessment, the short answer is yes, you would need to create a personal login. Thank you very much. A participant is asking, does this link to Teams, Zoom, etc.? I suppose they mean apart from sharing the screen. Yep, absolutely. Sorry, sorry, you're muted. I'm sorry, you're muted. Am I back? Can you hear me? Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> no problem, no problem. It probably gave people a break from my voice, which was nice. <laughs> um, but yes, the answer is it can be shared on Teams. Um, I can set up again for individual school accounts the access here. So if you wanted to share this pack or any pack, just the way it is, click on more. You can email, send it on Teams and also Google Classroom. So we do have that option as well. I know that some schools use one, not the other. Thank you very much. Can I download some of the materials and adapt them to my students need or are there content user restrictions? I believe they refer to the Creative Commons. Yes, so in terms of downloading the resources, every single sub resource within the pack can be downloaded offline. You will also be able to download the annotated articles within your personal login. So when I go here again, to make use of the annotation tool, you would need to create a personal account within, but you can still print, download all of the information offline if you don't want to annotate it. Uh, so yes, everything can be downloaded offline and personalized depending on how much you want to invest into the resource itself. Thank you very much. Are there any tutorial videos or a discussion forum on the website? Yes, I have got a tutorial video, which I know will be very useful because I myself still sometimes get lost in launch facts. It's very advanced, um, but I can share any tutorial videos and we can also set up a chat area where we can keep in contact during the STEM campaign. I'm more than happy to do that if it allows for more of the community to be engaged with any questions and answers, because I'm sure some of the members here today will have similar questions to those that join later sessions as well. Thank you very much. Can I share my materials or learning scenarios and have them published on Britannica? So in terms of that question, uh, what you can do is upload them into specific packs regarding publishing them as in for other people to use that wouldn't be possible. Um, so we have preset packs of information, the 1600 I mentioned. You can upload your documents within your personal login, but that won't be viewed by others. Uh, so again, I hope that clarifies that. Thank you very much. Um, so far, I haven't received any additional questions apart from the ones that you have already addressed. We have shared in the chat the registration form. Uh, should any participants want to reach out to you directly? Uh, please let us know if you have any more questions for Luke. Brilliant. And yeah, thank you very much for those questions. Again, I'm sure as and when people start requesting an account, I'm more than happy to answer some questions because they seem to come when you start playing around with the resource. Um, and I'm, I'm sure when uh, when you get into this and you start seeing the full capabilities, how useful it will be between now and May, um, there'll be many, many questions that come up. Um, and while I just wait for a few more questions, I'll just again go through the different categories just uh, for those still here with us. Um, again, we've broken down the resources into the different subjects. I can filter by grade. So again, it could go all the way from grade one to grade 12. Um, and it yeah, will cover all of your different strands of the curriculum for science. And for those physics teachers, you're not left out. I'll quickly give you a glimpse of what would happen if you were to look at some examples for physical science, motion and forces. Uh, as you can see, we have many, many packs, even for some specific topics. So we should be able to cater for 
um, saving you as teachers time, uh, putting together different resources from Google at the moment, which I know is a big challenge and very time consuming. Um, and also, I think that the way the packs are laid out are going to be great for your students, especially in the younger years. You know, we found that science is such a popular topic with um, especially smaller children. Um, and this is a really engaging way for them to, you know, learn from the resource and the different platforms available through article, image and video. Uh, we have one more question. After the trial period, what is the cost? Yes, so regarding the cost, that will be different uh, for every single school. So unfortunately, I can't answer that at this stage, um, but I can answer that on an email if you let me know the name of your school, the student population. Um, and again, Eleni, will everyone be receiving my email? Will that be available for them to contact me directly? Yes, we will make sure to share all your contact details on the STEM Discovery Campaign webpage. Brilliant. Yeah, feel free to email me after this session and I'll be able to answer the question about um, subscriptions after um, if that's applicable. Again, there's no obligation. We want to support you at the moment for the next three months. Uh, we won't be bringing up anything about price. Um, it's purely just to support you as science educators. But if you do have questions about the price, happy to answer those directly with you. I have shared your email address in the chat, so it should be visible to everybody. Great. Um, and there will be a form as well on the SDC 21 campaign. If you scroll down to Britannica, uh, you can actually simply request an access uh, through the link. We've already had quite a, a good response on there. Uh, great to see a large number of schools in Turkey, Romania, Cyprus all on board. So feel free to fill in. I think there's four fields, the name of your school, your contact email, and I'll be able to get back to you the same day with a login um, for you to start using with your colleagues. We have already shared the link as well in the chat. Brilliant. I think, uh, yeah, sorry about that. I can't see that. So that's no probably problem. why. <laughs> um, please let us know if you have any questions for Luke about the resources, the packages, Britannica in general, anything. Yeah, and just while there's some more questions, uh, some of you probably are thinking Britannica, didn't they used to be the encyclopedias? You're right, we did. Um, People are quite upset, actually, that we've switched from the, the books to online. Um, I like to make the joke, we're 250 years old, but obviously that's not myself. <laughs> I can't take credit for that. Um, but yes, um, essentially, we've got editors that work on this resource daily. It's updated on average every 20 minutes, so you'll always see up to date content uh, for all of the different topics. So if you're worried about the content being out of date, uh, don't fear because we have a team of editors that work on this daily. Uh, so I thought I'd just reinforce that as well while we ask any more questions. We have another question. So this is a service to be purchased by the whole school and not a specific teacher or department. Great question. Uh, Britannica launch packs is specific to obviously science, uh, but I didn't mention at the start that it could also cover your humanities su subjects as well. Uh, so it can be purchased via department. Um, I know that in some schools, every department, well, I know in every school, uh, every department has a different budget, so it doesn't have to necessarily be brought for the entire school. It can be brought on a smaller number of students within a specific department. Uh, so again, if you have a query about that, feel free to email me and I can clear that up. Um, so yeah, feel free again, if some of your colleagues aren't here today and you've got some friends in the social studies department, let them know that as well as the 1,600 packs for science, we've got exactly the same for science, social studies, history, geography and information technology. And that's here in the top right corner. Excellent, thank you very much. Um, if, if there's anyone with any questions about maybe filtering some of the grade levels, I'm more than happy to show that on the screen for the benefit of others. I can also show you some more of these categories. Uh, again, I appreciate that every teacher on here teaches something different um, in a different style. So feel free to tell me to take a look and I will do so. Okay. We have been receiving several um, submissions at the STEM Discovery campaign by teachers who experiment with interdisciplinary activities. Um, 
you know, that they combine uh, art subjects with science subjects. So I'm sure this is something very relevant. Will the session's video be available to us after it ends? Yes, we are going to upload it on the STEM Discovery Campaign webpage. Brilliant. And I think there'll be as well a couple more sessions. Yes, uh, and exactly. Over the coming months. So if you wanted to join some of those because you've actually now had a chance to use the resource and it might be better to come back, feel free to. Um, and I'll try and show some different examples that doesn't seem similar to this one. Um, can we please see you filtering using UK standards? Yep, so the actual UK um, standards one is on a different resource. So for this demonstration, I'm using this one, but I can give you access to the UK standards IGCSE launch packs. So please do, um, again, I can't see who's asked that question, but feel free to email me and say you specifically would like to see that one because we have a completely separate resource, which actually has questions on it from existing teachers as well. So the IGCSE UK standards packs have actually got more content than just articles, images and videos. There's actually learning resources ready to use. So that could be very beneficial for those asking about the UK curriculum. Thank you very much. The question is from uh, an anonymous user, so I hope that they will reach out to you directly. Yeah, no problem. And yeah, feel free to. I'll be happy to answer that. And yeah, for everyone, if there's a specific um, account you require, we can give you that. You know, that's part of the whole campaign. Uh, we work with your individual needs. Um, and we can also just to reiterate, if you have colleagues that haven't joined us today and you would like another presentation like this, we can do that as well for them. So it's not just a case of we expect you to use this one and know everything. We can support you as well throughout. And of course, as you previously mentioned, we're going to have one more Q&A session in March and one more in April. So returning teachers will have the opportunity to explore their launch packs at their own pace and time and get back to us. With yeah, more absolutely. questions. Absolutely. And I'm interested to hear the feedback as well. If you've got any feedback as well at this point without any questions, feel free to let me know. It'd be great to hear from you as science teachers what you think about a resource made for science te teachers. Um, it was always great to hear the feedback and yeah. Um, will be interesting to see how you find it when you're using the resource as well with your students. Um, thank you very much, Luke. Please let us know if you have any more questions before we wrap up and close the session. Um, I have a question myself. So yes. as far as I know, some of those uh, materials are translated in other languages as well, right? Yes. Um, so was that in terms of the language of the articles? Yes. So every article within a pack can be translated into 90 different languages. Um, so if I were to go into this pack on space exploration, one of the features that will again benefit different areas dependent on where um, you're tuning in from, you can translate the articles of all three reading levels into 90 different languages. So I'm going to use, I know I'm going to probably have so many requests here, I'm going to just be generic and go French. <laughs> I know that's going to be a big thumbs up from the French speakers here, but then others will be upset, apologies. Uh, but just bear in mind that this can be translated into 90. So, you know, there's a very high chance that you'll be able to do exactly the same for Spanish, Portuguese, German, all of those. But the great thing about this is that it doesn't just translate the entire text. If you hover over any sentence, you will actually receive the English next to it. So again, if you're a bilingual school, if you're an English speaking school, or if you want to encourage students to learn English on the side, this is a fantastic way for them to do so. So every article, of every grade level for every topic can be translated into one of 90 languages and you will always get the option of this original text next to it. Um, I hope one of the questions won't be for me to read this out in French because it would be very bad. <laughs> we hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, sounds great. This gives a lot of potential to so many teachers to further use the materials. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I know not only for the international languages, every article can be read aloud in English as well. So again, we cater for all students. Of um, course. Including those that require some additional learning support, maybe they'd be dyslexic or slightly visually impaired. We have that covered. That's uh, that's amazing. Brilliant. Then uh, I don't see any more questions coming in. Thank you very much, Luke, for being here with us today and for this presentation. Many thanks to all our participants. Please don't hesitate to reach out directly to Luke and his team at Britannica by filling in the registration form and requesting an account. Yeah. And uh, we will see each other again during our next Q&A session. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much, Lenny, and thank you everyone for joining. I'm looking forward to receiving your requests and questions on email. Absolutely. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a nice evening. Thank you. Bye.